As a college student, I do a majority of my homework and my social work on technology. I understand the struggle that parents must be facing with dealing with interacting with their kids. Have you ever been to the grocery store and the toddler in the cart next to you is playing on an iPhone? This is becoming increasingly popular. It seems as though parents are getting lazier with their discipline and interaction skills. More often, we see young children, like toddlers, playing on iPads and iPhone playing games. Although some of them may be educational games, this is probably not the case. Children have too much screen time, starting at very young ages. Four critical factors necessary to achieve healthy child development are movement, touch, human connection, and exposure to nature, things that are all taken away when an iPad is placed in the hands of a toddler. With a rise in obesity and a decrease in physical activity, technology is to blame. Is it really the parents' fault that the children are craving technological urges? By allowing young children to stare at a screen for hours on end, we're not only destroying brain cells, but we're also creating a habit for them to adapt and to put into use down the road. We're taking away face-to-face interaction and replacing it with a screen. We're teaching children that it's okay to text at the dinner table or to tweet in class. Eventually, this will become a larger issue when texting or searching the web and driving starts to occur. A lot of things happen on the internet, including cyberbullying, inappropriate site searching, a term called sexting, where adolescents send naked images of themselves to others, and there's always a threat of cyber predators. When safety comes into the mix in regards to technology and the internet, parents tend to start listening. To keep your children safe on the internet, have a conversation. If your children are old enough to have social media applications like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, make sure that the, your kids know the risks of their posts. Remind them that down the road, employers will have access to view their profiles and that anything posted on the internet is on the internet forever, even if it's deleted. To keep your children safe on the internet, remind them to follow these guidelines. Follow your family's rules and where and when to use the internet. Be polite, kind, and respectful, especially online. Understand a website's rules and know how to flag others for misbehavior. Recognize red flags, inclu- including someone asking you personal questions like your name, address, where you go to school. Never share your name, your school's name, your age, phone number, your email address, or your home address, and especially not your social security number with other strangers on the internet. Never send pictures to strangers. Be sure that if you are posting pictures on the internet, they are appropriate. Make sure you're keeping passwords private, except from your parents if you're young. And never open message a message from a stranger. It may contain a virus that could harm you, yourself or a computer. And make sure to immediately tell an adult if something mean or creepy happens online. So, other than the creeps on the internet, technology is doing much more to destroy your children than you, than you may believe. According to an article written by the Huffington Post, children's developing sensor, sensory motor and ex- att- attachment systems have biologically not evolved to accommodate the sed- sedentary yet frenzied and chaotic nature of today's technology. So with the rise in ADHD, autism, coordination disorder, developmental delays, unintellectual speech, learning difficulties, sensory processing disorders, anxiety, depression, sleeping disorders, and other mental illnesses, technology overuses is to blame. In order to build language skills, it's necessary for a child to interact with an adult face-to-face. ABC News states that there are now half a dozen studies showing that babies exposed to screens may suffer from language delays, and there has never been one study proving that it does any good. So rather than hugging, playing, roughhousing, and conversing with children, parents are increasingly resorting to providing their kids with more TV, video games, and iPads, and cell phone, uh, cell phone devices. So creating a deep and irreversible chasm between parent and child will make it increasingly difficult for a parent to interact with their kids. And for older children and adolescents, it's difficult to continue to build connections and relationships with parents. Between puberty, peer pressure, and now the addition of technology, it can be difficult to find a common ground to start conversations and regulate family time. An article from the Common Sense Media recommends creating a no-technology zone in your daily lives. So having a bedroom, your dinner table, and the car technology-free, you can better connect your child by building conversations and interacting face-to-face with no distractions of a screen. To help your kids manage their phone time, make sure that they model the 
that you model the behaviors and the manners that you want to see. Kids, no matter what age, will learn from observation. And if they see you texting in the car or answering a phone call during dinner, they are much more likely to believe that it's an okay thing to do and may eventually make a habit to do so themselves. So, when dealing with kids and technology, make sure that they're not getting enough screen time or they're not getting too much screen time and they are definitely getting enough face-to-face interaction. This will help with their development uh, throughout life and eventually create good habits for them to keep, teach their kids down the road. Thanks for listening.